So today we're going to talk about one of the best Irish rebel songs of all time. And a unique thing about this song is, it was originally written as a poem. So before we get into the video, make sure you hit subscribe on the channel to learn more about Irish history and Irish music. As you'll see, we're in a new location today. The location I usually film at is completely flooded because of all the rainfall here in Ireland. So this place is going to have to do for now. So this poem dates back to the year 1919, a very busy year in Irish history. As we know, on the 21st of January 1919, we had the very first doll airing in Dublin's Mansion House. We also had the Sala Headbeg ambush in County Tipperary, which kicked off the Irish War of Independence. And speaking of the first doll airing, the author of this poem was actually there in the Mansion House that day. His name was Charles O'Neill and he was a priest from County Antrim. For the first doll airing, 69 Sinn Féin members of Parliament were elected. 34 of whom were in prisons and eight others couldn't attend. Charles, like a lot of people that day, left the mansion house in a mix of emotions. He thought back to all of the people that fought and died for Irish freedom, most notably the people from the 1916 Easter Rising. During World War I from 1914 to 1918, over 200,000 Irish men joined the British Army and fought for Great Britain. A lot of these men went for a job, for money. Some even went to see new countries and to experience war. Halfway through World War I, in the year 1916, a secret Irish revolutionary body called the Irish Republican Brotherhood organised a rebellion or an uprising in Dublin for Easter week 1916. The rebels seized some symbolic and some strategic buildings in Dublin City they demanded and proclaimed an independent Irish Republic free from British rule and a six-day battle broke out in Dublin City. The British Army rushed in thousands of reinforcements, artillery and even a couple of gunboats. On Saturday the 29th of April, the sixth day of the uprising in Dublin, Patrick Pearce agreed to an unconditional surrender. Dublin City had been shelled to bits and the main rebel positions had either been surrounded or destroyed. The British forces started to arrest rebels and civilians all around Dublin City. They rounded up about 2,000 men and sent them to internment camps like Frongok in Wales. They also executed 16 of the leaders of the 1916 Easter Rising, 14 of whom were killed by firing squad in Kilmainham Jail in Dublin, which you can now do a tour of, which I highly recommend. If we go back to Charles's poem, he speaks of the 200,000 Irishmen fighting for the British army instead of staying at home and fighting for Ireland's independence. He says this with the line, "'Twas better to die Need that Irish sky than at Suvla or Sud Elbar. He also states that those men that fought with Britain would die in lonely graves, and if they had stayed at home and fought with Patrick Pierce and Cahill Brua, they would have been honoured and remembered. In my opinion, I don't think Charles wanted to show resentment towards these men necessarily. He was like a lot of other Irish people. He was in a state of emotion, sadness, anger, confusion. After the execution of the 1916 Easter Rising leaders, after the very first Dáil Éireann, he was in a state of emotion and he put these emotions to paper. Not all of them, but a lot of these Irish men that fought with Britain in World War I came back to be heroes. They used their experience that they gained from World War I to come back and train the Irish Republican Army, even on down to how to use weapons, munitions, how to drill. A lot of these men became absolute heroes. Look at World War I veteran Tom Barry as a perfect example. A lot of these men became generals and used their World War I experience to train the Irish Republican Army to be an unstoppable force. When Charles released and published this poem back in the year 1919, he didn't even put his name to the work. I guess as a priest, he didn't want any back clash or any controversy around his name. These were difficult and confusing times in Ireland and I think he just wanted to stay away from all of that and stay anonymous. Years after the poem The Foggy Jew was released, the poem was put to the tune of The Morlock Shore and was most famously sang by Sinead O'Connor and the Chieftains and this song has went down as one of the greatest Irish rebel and folk songs of all time. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the history of one of Ireland's greatest songs, The Foggy Jew. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button and make sure to drop a comment below of what song you want me to break down the history of next. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.